Hi everyone, this is Claritani, Community Relations Coordinator with The Y. I have been with The Y for over eight months. So today, actually, we're going to talk about something really important. It's, it's uh, dance and music in Black history. We are doing this topic to commemorate the Black History Month. So today, I actually have the artist who has been working for The Y for six months, yes, right? Six months. As uh, he works in youth and government, but I would let him introduce himself. So welcome, Deontes. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having the conversation. I'm super excited. So my name is Deontes. I have been with the YMCA for six months, as you said. My official role is the director of team programs and government outreach. So that's primarily me being responsible for ensuring that all of our signature programming is is executed and done well within our different branches. So I support the teen directors who are um, really making things happen for teens every day. And I also help to support our government initiatives. So our State Advocacy Day, our National Advocacy Day, and our big signature program, our Youth in Government, which happens every year and provides an experiential learning opportunity for young people within the Arizona area to learn about how like the legislative and government process, particularly on a state level. Youth and government is a big program. It is a huge program. And this year, um, 2022 makes the 75th year that the Arizona Alliance of YMCAs have been a part of the youth and government. Um, so super excited about that. That's amazing. That's really amazing. I have the pleasure to meet... Um, a lot of the delegations back yeah, in December, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, I saw you there. Yeah, too. yeah, that was um, I, that that was our first youth in government. Oh experience. yeah, that was yeah, 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 that was the first one, but it was amazing. It was it so was. interesting to see how the students were just like I was blown away. Just like talking from their hearts, I talking was like blown away. advocacy topic. So yes. that was amazing. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's go to the topic: dance and music. Dance and music. So I am passionate about dance and music. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm already united from Colombia. Mm -hmm. I have been living in the United States for four years. This mm -hmm. is going to be my fifth year in December. But I grew up dancing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Colombia and South American countries, we were conquered by Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then when the Spanish arrived, they brought a slave with them. Mm -hmm. So part of our culture is like, we have Afro descendants, we have uh, Native American or indigenous as we call mm -hmm. them, and we have like European blood. Mm -hmm. So for us, dancing is like essential in our culture, right? Yeah. Dancing has been evolved, especially like music throughout mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. But that's why I want to talk about dance because yeah. it's something that I'm passionate about and I we were talking about that too. You love yeah. dancing, right? Yeah, yeah. I love dance, I love music, um, I love I love I love black culture. So I am originally from Georgia and I have been just shaped by the African American art experience being from Atlanta. So not even just dance and music, but also theater, also um, writing and literature, but also like the civil rights movement that happened in Atlanta. Dr. King is from Atlanta and there's so many icons there. And it's really interesting how you can study African American history solely through the lens of music and dance and still come out with a really nice picture of the African American history historical experience yeah because it's a huge part of the basically to the black community right 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 i um so i've been doing some genealogical okay. uh, research Tell me all about it. Yeah, yeah and i mean i definitely uh, um have you know enslaved ancestry blood running within my veins and so um i i'm like a like my folks have been in Georgia since um the, since slavery, right? But well, but even before then, and so the hist. So as I'm studying African American history, I'm really studying the experiences of of those that shaped me. And as I think about it musically, mm -hmm. like this is the music that like my grandma listened to, my great grandmother listened to, her um grandma listened to. Like so, it's it's a fun. It's a fun journey for me, and even about dance. Mm -hmm. um, 
being from the black church and like dance is just a part of everything it's like a part of the heritage of your culture it really the is. traditions of everything and i do remember that i mean i have also like um african blood like mm -hmm. for my ancestors as well mm -hmm. i mean i have a little bit of mix up there mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. most of the colombians <laughs> yeah, yeah. but for us dancing and music is just a connection with your with your who you really yeah. are mm -hmm. and through your body and to yeah. your ancestors yeah. like yeah. you are basically commemorating them absolutely i think um even if we don't like consciously know who our ancestors are their blood is still in our bodies yeah, we are doing it right right so when our bodies dance our bodies our bodies know yeah. our ancestors our bodies know those that came before us even if we don't like consciously know so because of that i think that's why we have to dance because it's the movement that connects us from generations that came before us yeah of course and it's as you're saying it's in our blood and it's mm -hmm. something that is part of us but tell me a little bit about the evolution of like music and dance what, like from the first slave that arrived in the united states mm -hmm. i have I, I have been reading some articles and it mm -hmm. says like First, it, it was forbidden for them to yes. dance and for yes. listening music because, yes. the, uh, I mean, the people who have slept then knew that this was a way for, for them to communicate with themselves. Yes. And they wanted to, basically, they wanted them to lose their culture and their mm -hmm. traditions and their religion. So mm -hmm. they wanted to basically, like, mm -hmm. making them a slave, but in a new, like, in their own way. Yes. So I know that they lost these things and sometimes they couldn't play the drums mm -hmm. and they have to find new ways but mm -hmm. how was the evolution yeah so the evolution is 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 complicated because so i'll, I'll start here yeah. when africans were brought over through the transatlantic slave trade to the americas well the Americas primarily being North America, because South America would be considered part of that. But within North, within North America, there was definitely a huge push to not only control the bodies of the, of slaves, right? So control them for like the actual physical labor, but to control their minds. And so how to, and so in, in the colonialist white supremacist framework, to control their mind is to also erase any semblance of their of culture of home of africa make it bad make it demonic make it sat satanic and to really lift up white ideas of music so more classical ideas of choral music that we sing in unison that we sing uh, without a particular um it has a rhythm but it doesn't have a particular percussionist mm -hmm. beat to it to sing um to to sing as music is written and composed and to also not dance to not incorporate the body within this musical expression mm -hmm. and so yes many um many states banned slaves from being able to dance but the beauty of the african-american diaspora is that Afri enslaved Africans were so innovative to where they said, if you can't, if I can't lift my feet, I'll just shuffle would, them yeah, around. I would just find you know, a way. I'll find another way. I'll shuffle my feet around. I'll, sh I'll move my body around a little bit. Um, they, you know, because music, indigenous music from Africa was not allowed to be sung, they were like, okay, you can teach me the white Christian hymns. But what they did was they rearranged those hymns mu musically and rhythmically and would sing the lyrics, but with a particular African musicality and a particular way that still connected them to their home, to their ancestral home. They also would, um, so, so they would sing a song that sounded like biblical scripture, but they would be communicating subversive messages within the lyrics of that song. So they would sing a song like, so So the uh, the origins we'll say is the spirituals or the, the gospel, um, gospel origins. And so they'll have a song called Steal Away mm -hmm. and they'll be singing Steal Away to Jesus. And so the, the white slave master think that they're just singing a song that they learned in Sunday school. But what they're, they're not saying, they're saying S T E A L steal as if they themselves were property, they're stealing themselves away to run off to freedom. So they're singing a message, they're singing the song still away to Jesus, but what they're actually saying, what they're communicating to each other is we're about to run. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, the, the, the innovation of 
the African diaspora informed the spirituals and informed those early originations of of dance, right? So because they couldn't lift their feet because dancing was banned, they shook, they they swiveled their feet, they swung their hips, they they rocked side to side. They still used their bodies in very um dancing ways and this is kind of like the origins of how they subverted the rules and the laws to still be able to have some type of cultural connection to their ancestral homeland yeah and that's how you see that they really were connected to their homeland mm -hmm. and they found a way to keep their homeland mm -hmm. in their hearts right yeah. where they were before yeah. now mm -hmm. i mean back then and it reminds me a lot in colombia we have um so we have a slavery as well. And then from some time, they were like a, basically a group of people that we call the Palenques. They mm -hmm. basically run away from the people who were enslaving them. Mm -hmm. And they run away and they hit like kind of like probably an hour or two hours away from my city mm -hmm. where they were before. Mm -hmm. And then nobody could find them. But they was the first people who freed themselves from the wow. Spanish conquerors. Mm -hmm. But listen to this. like. Mm -hmm. They knew they wanted to be hit and they didn't want it to be found by the Spanish conquerors. But mm -hmm. of course, like that means that they find you, you're going to be a slave. Yeah. So they design in the women's uh, hair, they do some braids yes. where they hit yes. basically uh, the, like the a map. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like a map, like, okay, mm -hmm. if you want to run away, see women's hair and mm -hmm. then you will see... Mm -hmm how that would guide you yeah. to us. So they always find a way, they right? They found a way. There's another spiritual, very famous one called Follow the Drinking Gourd. Follow the Drinking Gourd is really a message of saying, follow the North Star. Because at the end, so the constellation, the 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 celestial constellation, the Drinking Gourd, the end of it is the North Star. And the North Star points north and so they would sing this song to communicate a message that if you want to run away just keep following the north star so they found they found innovative ways through music through hair through all of these other cultural expressions it's like so much of unity and liberation mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they really mm -hmm. wanted to move on and mm -hmm. they have to they have to find a way what i find beautiful is you're you're discussing innovative um practices that happened in Colombia. I'm talking about innovative practices that happened in like Georgia, Mississippi, Virginia, right? But there but the essence of their innovation was still there. Mm -hmm. Um so you know despite them being well like thousands of miles from each wow. other, the what was in their in their bones and their bloods from their native homeland was still it's still in them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is true and then if we go to the context of the music of dance you will probably will have like some things like similarities like mm -hmm. each of the dances of the music that they were using in the homeland have like a special context right absolutely like religious context mm -hmm. like social context political context mm -hmm. so i think i found it interesting what do you think about this yeah so dance has always been a part of of one major celebrations right particularly life celebrations so the birth of a of a new baby the the transition from childhood to adulthood. So different transition ceremonies would have dance. Marriages would have dance. You would dance in your, in religious, um, occasions, right? So whether it, whether one was practicing traditional African religions like Europa or Santeria or something, or whether one was practicing Christianity, they still brought dance into that atmosphere, right? In the, so I went to college in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. In the Sea Island communities of South Carolina, they are still doing what is known as a ring shout. And in many primitive Baptist churches in southern states, they're still doing what is a ring shout, where you're dancing in a circular fashion and you're just moving your body side to side and swing, but you're moving collectively like in a circle, um, symbolizing the circle of life and things like that. So they're bringing their bodies rhythmically in every facet of their life, whether it's in um, some type of religious setting, but also just just because we're getting together and having a family reunion, we need to start dancing. Um, so it's just a, yeah. this and, is what you do. And actually, you mentioned something about the transition between like, you know, when the, especially the women go to like through the process of puberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have something in Colombia, it's called Bullerengue, mm -hmm. and it's basically um, 
like yeah uh, an afro um, for afro-colombian dance where women are the only ones who dance mm -hmm. and they basically try to move the hips and mm -hmm. they try to move like it's very feminine yeah mm -hmm. but they basically we are really like means, graceful move yeah bit. it's kind of like with their a big skirt mm -hmm. and they are moving mm -hmm. and they are using mm -hmm. their hips but it's basically to commemorate the transition from you know like on all the poverty mm -hmm. so then for them it's very um it's like only women, but sometimes like now in the you know how it evolves all the mm -hmm. time. Now mm -hmm. they are trying to incorporate incorporate some men on that one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it talk about even about religious. I I read that some people in Nigeria in some tribes they um they do some dances like to commemorate the mother earth. Yeah. Or the ancestors, yeah. mm -hmm. or they are just using masquerades mm -hmm. and they are trying to dance uh, through the moon and to the the sun. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, it's is there. There are some thought processes that says that there is energies and the and divine presence in all of creation. Like if 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 God is the big creator of everything, then God is in everything and it is in everyone. And so, because I cannot verbally talk to other forms of creation i can still vibe and engage with the essence of it through movement mm -hmm. and so there's there's definitely and i mean we find this even within like indigenous american culture so like um mean native american and other indigenous communities also have forms by which they use their bodies to engage with nature um thinking about the essence and beauty of it we think about the rain dance mm -hmm. that many um communities have and so yeah there's there's definitely this this idea which i, I think is very valid that we have to be engaged with nature um and dance opens up an opportunity for that engagement. Yeah, and I think dancing is like a grounding technique, right? Mm -hmm. Because it just connect your physical body in this um and here is like make mm -hmm. you more conscious it makes you feel like okay i'm here i'm just gonna mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. and there is some people that have done tons of research on like how dancing and music have basically improved some people's life or yes. in their health health yes. journey right and yes. even like our ancestors were doing mm -hmm. this before because mm -hmm. they understood that dancing is just a way to like basically like because you know like there's always a separation between the spiritual world and mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. physical world mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. through dancing you can connect both yes. and it makes you hear yes. and then it's like like the both essence your physical mm -hmm. body and your mm -hmm. soul connected into one yeah. it's like makes you feel here and living a present life and enjoy this experience yeah and and within many african-american christian faith traditions there is um particularly within pentecostal movements there's there's like shouting that happens in church where the 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 spirit is so high within the worship service and folks start dancing and running and shouting and speaking in tongues and all other kind of stuff but but the idea of it is that connected to what you're saying about the spiritual world and the physical world is that to engage in the spiritual world fully words aren't enough i have like there's something else i need to bring to this moment because i'm i'm so i'm so into the moment but but just saying like this is great isn't enough mm -hmm. what else can i bring i can bring my body and so I'm going to bring my full body into mm -hmm. this. So I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout. I'm going to run. I'm going to I'm going to move because I I can't just sit still. I, you know, I, there's there's so much more I can bring. So I'm going to bring it. It's like basically they or like ancestors and um, they knew exactly everything, right? It's mm -hmm. like now we are trying to incorporate incorporate it to this mm -hmm. world, right? Mm -hmm. Like a dance therapy or trying to connect the spiritual world with the uh physical body or maybe trying to do some things like I don't know, like social norms through dancing, but mm -hmm. they knew this already. Always. They always, always. knew it and they have always. done it for many years. Mm -hmm. And I think like the movement of like dance as a way of therapy has been like pretty new, like no yeah. longer than 50 years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And our ancestors have been doing it for, for a while. forever. For like, a while. So then what do you think about using dancing as a as a therapy? As, well, I don't, I mean, we have so many forms of therapy, art therapy, there's sound therapy. So there's like ways in which different sounds could be and the vibrations of the sounds can also be really good, particularly as a calming method. We know 
We know dance is physical, can be very physical therapeutic for people to provide them opportunities to move and to bring activity to certain parts of the body that might not have been really I active. Agree. But I think also dancing can be very cathartic because it provides ways to escape pent up stress, pent up trauma, pent up emotions. And it's a really good way of like processing through some of those like pent up energies and things like that and provide some, some, constructive form of release so and i think i would i would even venture to say i haven't done much research here but i would venture to say that that's why many of our ancestors danced because that was their only therapy they were experiencing some of the most brutal and heinous acts you can ever inflict upon a human and they didn't they didn't have a a, a psychologist or a counselor exactly. they could go to um they would they would go to church and pray and then they would just dance and that was that that very much so could have been a very cathartic activity yeah and i think like if we go to the history and the instruments they basically were created mm -hmm. because there was a necessity like you know like to honor like to for like depends on spirituality mm -hmm. to political even yeah. like sometimes like in some tribes in west africa the leader when it's like a hierarchy tribe they have to he has to dance and he had yeah. to do it so well mm -hmm. he, he doesn't do it well like okay that's then you are losing your prestige right yeah. but i think like like all these uh ways for like for example in my case let's say i am a sumo instructor mm -hmm. i have been dancing all my life i love mm -hmm. dancing my mm -hmm. mom used to take me to the parties when i was a very kid mm -hmm. and then she was letting me letting me there and i was just dancing yeah, right yeah, because true, that's true. something normal it's like in our blood it's mm -hmm. in our history and then when i became sumo instructor i did it with the purpose of like healing myself mm -hmm. because i have been in a journey of um rheumatoid arthritis for a couple years right mm -hmm. like eight years so mm -hmm. i know like dancing and music has been helping and then the way that i do it i do it consciously right mm -hmm. i do it because i set an intention i'm gonna dance because i want to connect with my body i yeah. want to connect with my spirit mm -hmm. and then when i'm teaching i am trying to teach them like these um intentions to my students i mean yeah. i don't know if they, you can call them <laughs> students. they are they're the learning members, something <laughs> yeah the members that come into my Sumba class because i want them to feel the music mm -hmm. i want them to feel the connection i want them to feel like you know there's ways to be happy there's mm -hmm. ways to heal yourself there is way to feel more connected more mm -hmm. grounded and music one of them mm -hmm. like dancing is one of them so even like now for the black history month i am only playing um African music, oh, good, and they good. love it yeah, yeah. because it's the beats, right? The I, I, I don't understand how I, you you have to have some type of percussion. Yeah. Um, like I mean, and I I've heard music, and then the music turned off and my body feels differently. Like, I'm like, turn it back on, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like I, was, I didn't even realize how much the music had been impacting my body physically in very positive ways. And so, yeah, yeah, I... I don't know how. And it, it reminds me now that you mentioned it. In Colombia, we have something that if you're really passionate about dancing and music, like even with the wind, you can move. Or even with like, you know, the air conditioning dropping, the water dropping from the air conditioning. You can find the beat. You can find, find it, right? Rhythm, right, right, right. There. Uh, but that's so interesting. I think uh, dancing is such a beautiful uh, thing to do in our mm -hmm. daily lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I think especially like African music, it just provides a different experience. It does. It does. I think, um, I think for far too long, we have denied ourselves the beauty of the, of African contribution to music, to food, to hairstyles, to um, dance. We, we've denied it because for history so long told us that all of that was bad, all of that was, was, um, was just something not to aspire to want to engage with but we're realizing like gosh that was all wrong this is really beautiful and exciting and mm -hmm. really and for for those of us with african ancestry it's it's a part of who we are yeah it's who we are and mm -hmm. it's something that we have to care with ourselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you know 
like given um teaching to or like generations about who mm -hmm. we are and where are we coming from mm -hmm. because i i believe that if we don't know our history and we don't learn about it and we don't accept who we are is it different for us like to keep moving because then yeah. you ask yourself who i am where i'm coming mm -hmm. from what i'm mm -hmm. gonna do and if we don't know that history we can repeat it and they have mistakes and yes and and there's a lot of that history we we have no busy business repeating like we don't want to repeat it at all yeah there is this quote um i i they have it in uh, the series of pablo escobar mm -hmm. they have it like who doesn't know the history is condemned to the re to repeat yeah, it. yeah because yeah. it's true I it mean, is true we need to know the history in order to this is why we can read yeah. stories from people's lives that have been well before we were born and find so many similarities because like our the, our the human nature and the human condition doesn't really change that often it's really like our human behavior that changes mm -hmm. and if we are not careful some of those behaviors that we shouldn't have been doing a while ago can creep back up and mm -hmm. find its way within our contemporary world so yeah we have to like basically uh put ourselves in that evolutionary process and mm -hmm. keep moving instead mm -hmm. of going backwards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but speaking of the evolutionary process i want to talk a little bit about the yeah. evolution of um of music within african american mm -hmm. tradition and and how dance has evolved with that right so yeah, we got go the ahead. spirituals and then out of the spirituals emerged the blues so the blues when you're thinking about the blues it's really putting a putting song to lived experiences mm -hmm. particularly songs that 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 speaks to my the experiences of my soul and the experiences of my my agony and my pain and my grief but also my joys and my excitement like really putting music to that and singing it in such a way to where it it connects to your soul and, and and it starts to move both of us so we have the blues that starts to emerge we also see jazz emerging jazz is one of those indigenous american music art forms that came from the experiences of african americans who 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 took the blues but but gave it a a little extra beat and a little extra step and some dance vibes to it to really get people up on their feet and start really moving um when you think of jazz you can think about folks like Louis Armstrong, also known as Satchmo, playing his uh his I believe it was a trumpet, just just like just getting the people up on their feet, moving and grooving and dancing. Then we have R and B, um rock and roll. As much as we want to think I that it was just Elvis roll. Presley, it was not just Elvis it's Presley. Deeper. It's much deeper and, and far more African American influence than that. And then of course we have hip hop and rap. And so this evolution also accompanied an evolutionary uh, an evolution of dance styles as well so some of these dance styles that we have so we have alvin ailey who is a very prominent um dancer who who composed a lot of amazing music that incorporated jazz that incorporated some of the classical music and really made dance uh a professional art form within the African American tradition. Mm -hmm. We also have like the swing, we have the soul train line during some of those rhythm and blues, uh, during some of the R&B origins that happened during the 70s and all the way up into this day where we have people who are twerking and things like that. Like all of that comes from this, this lineage of music, but also this lineage of how we our bodies respond to that music through the form of dance. Yeah. And you know, now that you're mentioning like the evolutionary process of like music, in Colombia, we have kind of the same. We have this like called champeta. Have you ever heard of champeta? Mm -hmm. Oh, you should Google it. Okay. We love it. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite one. It has a lot of drums and beats, but it, the, how it started, it was, at, um, I think it was a in the 60s or 70s, a little bit of like, yeah, 1960s, 70s, mm -hmm. they started to use champeta as a way for them to do activism, you know, to talk mm -hmm. about political mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. injustice, mm -hmm. but then it was just evolving and we're talking a little bit about current situation that were happening around mm -hmm. and it started to roll in like mm -hmm. little bit by little, year mm -hmm. by year, and mm -hmm. now we have a champeta is more like for dancing. And mm -hmm. people sometimes include injustice 
and sometimes yeah. talk a little bit about political scenarios yeah. or social scenarios but right now it's more like kind of like rap or reggaeton you know yeah, like yeah. when they mm -hmm. talk, about, talk about women or mm -hmm. men or mm -hmm. like i met her she forgot mm -hmm. me she mm -hmm. loved me <laughs> you know that yeah, yeah but it's so interesting how music evolves i think when we evolve everything evolves around us mm -hmm. right it's like technologies mm -hmm. like look at us like technology right now it's yeah. crazy it's right <laughs> we're gonna be flying a couple years so, very slow <laughs> yeah but i think it's beautiful uh, no matter what i think like every dance every music especially when we talk about african that is like like so important and everybody's mm -hmm. talking about it about it and everybody's like making music for that it just give like something different to the human experience yeah. in my opinion of yeah, course yeah yeah but i love it i think and i enjoy it and yeah i think i'm coming to realize more of us enjoy it and more of us are just starting to talk about it yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we need to talk about it, and I'm glad yeah. that we're talking today. Uh, likewise. Yay, likewise. but thank you so much. It was a really great conversation, and thank you for being here. I know that it won't be the, la the first one. <laughs> nah, nah, we will nah. have a couple more, <laughs> because we have to talk about many other things. Yeah, but yeah. I enjoy you having you here, and then thank you so much. And no problem, yeah. no problem. Thank you, Clary. This is fun. Thank this you, guys. Fun. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>